to hello everyone today in this session we'll learn like basically introductory fiction and like statistical physics and how it's more like to is related to theory of machine learning the mostly basic ideas only because one session we can't cover much so like after this session you'll be able you'll have a base of going forward in this area like what are they are like Boltzmann machines and stuff. So let's start. I'm properly audible, right? Yeah, yeah. So first, first thing we should know is how learning works. Let's say our brain or any neural network or any things as neuron perceptor and whatever theory of machine learning, how it actually learns and predicts. So we have a, like we have input and output. Let's say our input is X. In the real world, the output is Y. But by our network, let's say network W is there. It can be the brain network or any artificial neural network also. So when I put that input X to the network W, it processes like it gives output as f f of w x right so and, and that that output is a little bit like in the sense different from the real output y by distance t as you can see here so, okay. So what, like, how do you determine the W basically from real data? So what you do, you take a set of X, like in this space, there are a lot of X values. You take a particular circle of whatever from here, and you know what, what Y does the output get, right? So what you do, you train that amount of X by the network and receive output and you see how much error every head gives and by calculating the error you see that how can you optimize the error the more optimized the error is the better your network is like this so uh, how do you exactly get the error an example of desired desired map is x to y basically and the network map is X to F of FWF. So you have an example of uh, like some X1 to Xn and Y1 to Yn. You you are you already know that this input has this output in real world. So what you do key, you take these X values and process them in network. They'll give some F F1, X, F2, X, F3, X like that. So you see how it's different from y1, y2, and y3 to calculate the distance between them. So one way of getting the distance between them is I call it least square. Like you subtract both the values, square them out, and calculate the error. This is one of the methods. Another one you can say just difference y minus fx, no square. But commonly we use the least square method to get the error. So what we do key, we construct a um, cost function that measures the average error over the training set. We call that as learning error. If you have done machine learning previously, you would have known that we calculate, we optimize this error to get a better network or whatever. Basically, all the learning, like most of the learning algorithms are based on finding the parameters of W, which minimizes the learning errors. Uh, like it doesn't matter regression and classification. In case of regression, we use this learning error. In case of classification, we use a similar kind of error. We call it maximum likelihood. Everything is clear till now. And any doubts, you can text. Just. 
you can unmute and say that put it in chat also if you have any doubt. I'll continue. Can you explain what the formula entails? This uh, one. Formula yeah, the first one. Yeah, so what we have is like you saw this map. No, there is a difference in real world output and output was the network processes, right? And they are slightly yeah. different. Okay, so there is some error. So the one way of identifying the error is you subtract both the values and square them. This is one way of I mean, you define your error function like that. You can also do y minus f of x also. I mean, you don't need to include the square. Like you can define your error function whatever you want. That is your algorithm. OK. In this particular case, in our algorithm, we have used the least square error. Like we square the difference between desired value and and Value output value and summed over them and took average, right? Get it? So uh, we are getting two values from the telescope. The I real one it. and the and yeah, there are two in the map. There are two values x and y. So if we watch from telescope, you are saying we only get the error one that is the y one. So how is that we know? What it's not is? like it's not related to much again like telescope, I guess. It's like you, you have a processing network. Do you know about neural networks uh, beta machine learning? Uh, no, I am learning. So or any like processing, let's have a brain, okay? So what do we learn is like, you know that two plus two is four, okay? Right? Yeah, basically. So the desired value is two plus two is four, but when you were a kid, no, you don't know what exactly that means, right? So you learn from the experience, right? Get it, no? So basically, as people say it, your brain processes the, like, what is this? The input and gives some output. How it works is, like, there's an error in real world data, desired output and actual output. But what the brain or any network desk, it minimizes the error. Based on that, it learns and, like, gains experience. Did I get it clear? Or maybe I should annotate. Yeah. Okay, is it clear now? Yeah. Uh, one better example I can give is like, you can say you have a weather prediction, let's say. The you pre, uh, by, there's some processing thing you predicted weather to be this, okay? Let's say temperature prediction, 20 degrees Celsius something, but the actual is 22. So what, like, let's say you give it 10 days data, like 10 different days, 10 different temperatures. There's some formula generated in the machine. So once you give the different data of the day, it uh, like gives the output temperature based on his own prediction, right? But let's say it predicts 20 degree temperature, but the actual temperature is 22 degree. So there's an error of two, two degrees Celsius, right? So for like that, for 10 days, you calculate different error. Then you design an algorithm to minimize that. And then you very uh, rectify the machine based on the error optimization. You got it? Yeah. Yes, 
So I'll move to the next part, I guess. If anyone else has any doubt, you can ask. So let's move to the next part, this configuration sphere. So I just draw it. Uh, just give me right here. Yeah, so one minute. You have this thing, W, right? There can be multiple W. Let's say you design W like W can be X, X square or like the function w x square or ln x whatever you have what it like based on your network what your w is i mean it can be multiple functions okay or multiple composite function complicated function whatever it doesn't matter so what we do in configuration spaces you take the all possibility of network w uh just In configuration with what we do is we take all possibilities of the network W, like all possible functions. What it? So one point is this in this space is a particular network W, a particular function f of W. And we define the probability of that particular network is as rho naught W, call it prior probability. Basically, rho naught w is what is like choosing a particular w out of all possible options. I guess it's clear. Hello. Am I clear in this yeah. or anyone in doubt? Because this is important going to further slides. Are you guys clear what exactly this term is? Rho naught W. In reply in chat also. So rho naught W includes points that are present in the space that is given to us. A rho naught W is like probability of choosing that point. Like there's a particular W. Out of all possibility, the probability of choosing that particular W is rho naught W. And the DW is a difference that we had calculated. DW is a small in the sense, yeah. It's like uh, normalization. You like sum of all probability should be one, right? Yeah. So in the case of since W, all this is not district, all are continuous. So instead of summation, we do integration. I got I think it's here now. Yes, this is uh, where we would deal a lot with probability and distributions. So uh, what exactly is this? Uh, zeta mu. Like let's say as I told before. Uh, what do we learn like do the error optimization is on the training set or training set is like the particular values like x and y which we know like the input and desired output like the setup set up those many pairs we know is known as the training set so as for our algorithm like this algorithm is based on like theory of statistical physics. Mm. So we define a ma masking function theta, which is like 
a to the power minus beta e is the error. Uh, I guess. Uh, one minute. Yeah. Basically, for every like you have mu points of x and y, like mu pairs. I just list here. Uh, you have this x. This is x map. This is y space. You take, let's say mu is three. You take three points, and you take three points here. Oh, messed up kind of yeah. So basically, this this pairs, this three pairs are basically our training sets. You denote it by zeta mu. This thing, where mu is until one, one, two, and three, one, two, three. So what you do? You based on the particular mu, we define a masking masking function. Like. It will mask the error basically. Uh, it will come to know, like, as we go further, why did we choose this particular function to mask? And here, beta is we call the tolerance of error, like how tolerant you are to the error. Because as beta is infinity, like maximum tolerance. If beta infinity, this goes to zero, right? A to the power minus infinity is zero, tending to zero. So, as the network has some error, like which, if the network has some error, this will, if I'll just write it. If this thing is not equal to zero, And one thing is, is equal to zero. If this is equal to e is zero, then theta would be obviously one because e to the power zero is one. If this is not equal to zero, then it will stay as like some finite value, okay? Right. But as beta tends to infinity and e is finite, there is some error. When e to the power minus beta i, goes to zero, tends to zero. That means the mask, the masking filter we have used, filter out network which creates any error. But we don't want to filter out any error because input data might be noisy. So we need some tolerance to train and get actual teaser output. I hope this is clear. Can chat or just acknowledge if it's clear till now. Just give me a minute. I then you can put your doubts in chat. Or... Yeah, I'll move to the next one. Yeah, I forgot to introduce a term. This entire space of all possible W, we call it an ensemble. It's a term like basically copy of all possible values. It's similar to that of faith space, like you have here. In case of simple pendulum, you guys know, no? Like you have some 
this kind of space harmonic oscillator whatever we have this case like this uh, every point depends the state of the system you guess i guess you can relate so like that the configuration space is same thing like each point depends the particular state of the network w and the space the entire space we call it ensemble so what happens to the and like before any masking we have ensemble probability rho not w right like we, we are not introducing any filter so choosing a particular w is rho not but now we mask something with some error tolerance and function the theta so how do we mask so I think I got disconnected. Now I'm audible. Yeah, now you are audible. So what happens to and probability after masking? So first you take let's say zeta one, and you have the training state. You take first pair x one and y one, and you calculate the error from the actual data. Okay. So you just multiply the probability with that distribution, rho not w, after getting the error. Like that, across all like one to m, all training set x1 to xm, you multiply this function e to the power minus beta i. So like at the end, after doing training with all m values, we you get a function like this. Probability distribution like this, which you call as rho m w after masking, and we call it posterior probability. Yes, uh, everyone clear in this. So after masking, the probability of choosing a particular w in this space is now this rho of m. Instead of this thing, initially it was this rho not of w, but after all the masking, we have rho of m because we filter out some of w, right? Like some w's we filtered because of masking, which are interlinked to the errors. Got it? I think is everyone clear in this? Can you repeat what is this equation doing there? Which one? Uh, um, yeah. yeah. So what exactly we do? We mask the probability distribution by some function theta based on our training output, right? Say you train train one x y pair and find out their e w and z time, right? Mm. After training, you see your error is less or high depends on that. You put a tolerance masking. Because if uh, error is high, if this is high, then this thing will tend to like go more towards zero, right? As this this error goes to infinity, theta will go towards zero. Got it. Mm. We don't want more errors to add the network, right? So you multiply this theta to the probability, like initial probability rho not w. So that the probability of choosing the same w, which gave so much error, is minimized now. 
right okay uh, you understood thank you yeah so basically we are filtering out all the w's who which like we are minimizing the probability of choosing all the w's which give larger errors okay i guess is clear yeah uh, yeah so based like in first training to theta 1 we multiplied by this thing and like that in case of all m iteration we multiply all e to the power minus beta right this is a product of 1 to m okay and now our new probability distribution is rho m of w got it this is called posterior probability because after the masking we got it and rho or rho not w is called the prior probability and you define something called partition function which is this thing coming over or all rho m and as we see the formula of rho m is just this Got it. And EL is this thing. And see here, the average of this thing. So you just multiply a M here and beta EL. Is it clear now? And this thing is quite popular in physics and statistical physics as well. The partition function. Can text that ask if unclear or clear. I'll go to next slide. Or uh, anyone has any doubt, just text it. Okay, what does partition function mean? I mean, it's like sum of all posterior probability. You can say it. I'll come to that in canonical ensemble, what exactly it means in the further slides. For now, let's just assume it as a definition. Okay, we define it as integration of rho m w. Basically, sum of the posterior probability. Okay, now we come to it of thermodynamics and statistical physics. Now let's say there is a chamber which has a fixed number of like isolated system in particles and a fixed total in G. We call this system microcanonical ensemble. So there are N gases. Like N gas particles and the energy C. So how in how much different way we can alternate like arrange the N particles? That is known as the total number of microstates. This is nothing but like how can the N gases be arranged in the chamber? So uh, you can calculate the value of this omega by combinatrix, basic permutation combination. And like it will come something like that. And we define entropy as this. Kb into ln of number of microstates. That's what the definition of entropy. Like how it came, I just saw it.
So um, just give me a the general definition of entropy we define as this. Like for any probability P, probability distribution P of X. So the entropy is defined by minus KB summation of P into LNP. Like or you can say integration in, in case of continuous P of X uh, ln P of X DX, like that. This is the general definition of entropy with respect to the probability distribution. So here, in this case, there are so omega is the total number of microstates. Like, let's say this is um, this is the configuration space of microcanonical ensemble. The total number of points in this is omega. So you choose one point. What is the probability of choosing this point? Can anyone tell it? Everything is uniform, like there's no discrimination. There are omega points, all are identical, and you choose one point out of them. What is what will be the probability? Can you guys put in chart or speak up? One by omega? Yeah, right. So probability will be one by omega. Uh, I can't write here, but yeah. So now you now you know the probability distribution, right? Now use this formula to calculate entropy and text in the chart or speak out. I'm waiting for the answer. I'll give you two minutes. Anyone has any answers? You have the probability here. I mean, I want so. P is one by omega in this case. So calculate S. It should be easy enough.
anyone in text to speak up? Uh, do you want me to explain? Or mistakes someone? No one seems this one. Yeah, okay. Uh, empty space. Fine. So I have this thing. I'll just use the formula. It will be. I'm skipping the KB term. KB is implied summation. Since your micro canonical ensemble has omega points, you choose one point, which is one by omega probability. So the number of points is m uh, omega so your k goes from 1 to omega right k goes from 1 to omega probability is 1 by omega ln 1 by omega that is nothing but minus ln omega okay To put a minus here. Right. Now, since the minus minus was cancelled, and you're summing over this, so this omega gets cancelled with this. We just get KB ln omega. Right, everyone got it. Nice. Explained here. Entropy is K Villa Omega. Is it clear now? Well, this this thing you check in every chemistry or uh, whatever book in thermodynamics chapter, it starts from this formula. And I write now. So now one more interesting thing, temperature, what you define is not what we define, it's defined from the entropy. This is partial derivative of entropy and energy. So temperature is a derived quantity, not a fundamental quantity in case of thermodynamics, which is an interesting fact. And yeah, so probability of finding any matrix is on by omega. And there are a lot of things like this, and I mean, there are pretty good paradox you can say, like negative temperatures and stuff. You can explore these areas. In two state systems, there's a thing called negative temperature. You can look it up at in Google or somewhere else if you have time. I can send resources also after the session. Okay, now this was the system we we had constant like n and d are fixed. Now we go to some other rest constraint. In that case, uh, energy we kept it fixed, but in real case, it's difficult to know the energy and keep it fixed, right? But temperature, we can keep it in heat bath and keep it fixed. So in that case, the like, number of particles, volume and temperature is fixed, but in isolated system, but energy can transfer. We call that canonical ensemble. Canonical ensemble. 
unlike microcanonical, instead of dealing with microstates, we deal with partition function, which is a bit easier to handle than microstate or entropy. This is where the partition function can basically e to the power minus beta ek. Ek is energy of kth particle. So there are n particles like this. We sum over k from 1 to n, like all particles. Ek denotes energy of kth particle and beta is beta is 1 by k bit. K is Boltzmann's constant, T is temperature. Is everyone clear till now? So I can see this our this algorithm of masking came from like inspired from my canonical ensemble. Can anyone text if unclear or clear or how to explain again? I'll go to. So in this energies of the microstate sum can vary. Thus, I mean, the, the partition function need not be a function of energy. Because you don't know particle of like energy of each particle. They can vary arbitrarily, so it can be a function of energy of the system. Instead, it depends on the temperature, which is fixed. Once Z is known, we can compute different thermodynamical quality quantity. So how do you dis like achieve canonical ensemble or discuss? You have a heat path of like very high temperature and very high energy. And you keep a, this is the source. You keep a system inside this, which is, uh, which of course will be at same temperature as the heat path, but a smaller energy, EM. And you can transfer heat at entropy within the heat path and the system. We, the, this thing is closed, so closed system. So no particle can flow, only energy transformation is possible. So yes. Yeah. Uh I it's better if you guys get a clear picture of the system. I'll just, I mean, basically this, this energy is variable, like it can take energy from this. But the temperature and this energy is, I mean, this energy is much, much larger than EM, so we can ignore the difference in this. Right, right. EHP minus EM can be approximated to EHP as the heat with energy is that large. So now we can, we want to study all the microstates inside this. What are the all possible microstates of the system under study? For that, we can take the entire this system plus the reservoir as a isolated, a closed system or isolated whatever. 
the total energy of the system is this em plus ehp is e total fixed and the probability of finding the system in finding like q say omega k some microstate k here yeah. it it is in some microstate k then then uh, what is the probability of finding this in microstate k is like Config like finding that number of ways. How can we configure the system with e total, right? Like reservoir is energy e r. What is the total number of ways of configuring the? I mean, the entire system as a microcanonical symbol. Is it clear till now? Just read this thing and tell me if it's clear. If this is important, if you have any doubt, just speak up. I'm thinking like probability of this system being under a state K is same as configuring the entire system with this system being as state K and which would be proportional to not be same as configuring the heat bath with energy ER. So probability of K is Probability of system being in state K is probability of feature bear being in energy, which is this is some normalization constant. And this is number of microstates of make like rigid wear at energy ER, which is E dot minus AK. And as this thing is very small compared to total energy because heat bath energy is much much higher we can use Taylor expansion you can see you can look at the derivation later after the session after using the Taylor expansion first order expansion you get this is some um, Is proportional to it to a minus beta k by some normalization constant j. So j is this thing basically. C omega r into e total. J is this thing. And since sum of all probability should be one, that means sum of all e to the power minus beta k should be j. As this by definition of probabilities, all of the case would be one. And J is a constant quantity depending. And since J is constant, that means J should be this thing. Got it? This is the definition of partition function. Anyone asked before? Is it clear now? And this term is nothing but a writing in terms of energy. EI is a particular energy, and GI is the number of particles in that energy state. For a degeneration. Uh, 
and how do you calculate average energy? This same as probability, like expectation of probability you get. And you can you will get this expression as average energy or internal energy, whatever you tell the function. And also the distribution in canonical expression is called the gift distribution, which is popularly used in machine learning. So by same definition, you can calculate the entropy also. The derivation is a bit of work, a lot of work. So I'm skipping this. You can look at, look at that after the session. Or maybe if we have time after all the slides, we can look this. So this is the expression of entropy in can consume. This is the expression of average energy. And this is how entropy and energy are related. If anyone has any doubt in this inter slides, please. Anyone can, if I need to explain again this slide, please inform. Hello. So I assuming everything is clear. Move on. I mean, I can later ask out in group itself for after the session. So now we are done. Like, we got the basic overview of canonical ensemble. Now we are back to this this probability distribution, posterior probability. So the ensemble of all possible models and network is distributed by zero density rho not w, and the ensemble of trained models is described by the posterior density rho m w. Right, and this is how they are related. And you can see that this this distribution is similar to that of Gibbs distribution. If you take row not w, like the division between them, row m and row not w, is same as the Gibbs distribution of canonical ensemble. Uh, so we can use all these concepts we have derived: the energy and entropy, this thing. 
and we can use some analogy there to get similar expression of entropy and mean mm -hmm. uh, Come to that in next slides. I'll come back to this thing and later. It's not really relevant here. So in this case, in our network of double partition function is as we have seen here. Yes, this this function. Integration of row MW, which is Rona W to the power minus beta E. And it's a difference on specific data points, X, D, X, Y. Those data points are those which we have used for training, that M points, X1 to M, X1. And this EL is the learning error, the mean error of, of all training. So we need to average to get the mean and uh, like, Average energy or whatever. Since we are using these concepts, the average energy and entropy concept, we need to average it over all data sets. D. So let's calculate average energy here. That is, as we formalize this. Uh, I would say try to get this value on your own. I'll give you some five, 10 minutes.
this thing now what i want you want you guys to do is you have this partition function we have and you have this formula of getting average energy this energy average energy is minus j ln j by dj and entropy so what i want you to is get the energy and entropy for this distribution gauge distribution then get strike mean energy is minus df ln j by t inter del of beta and entropy is Average energy by T plus K B B lambda. Yeah. I'll give you some K formulas. Yeah. You have the formula of J, so just have to take log and difference it by beta. It won't be much. Just uh, try it. and try it out. You can reply and chat it. Hello. You can speak your if you are facing any problem, I can explain it later also. I'm in here also. Just get the entropy for this distribution.
If you want me to explain, I can. Yes, text in the chart. What is this funny? Yes, you guys tried. I hope um, what's trying one. Okay, fine. So you have the expression of JDM is given, and you know that the average one. So the average energy is given by this formula as you derived in the above slides. It's same for all the canonical terms from this. So a partition function, you can get the average energy as this. And this would be same as one by GDM as chain rule. On which you take it where do you get? And how do you get this from this? So let's take it. So one by z, it's one by it's one good place to draw. We have one by Z and DZ by D beta is D do by do beta. Do beta of this thing. Integration of do W. I hope my handwriting is fine. So W into the power minus M B. You can take this beta inside the integration. It doesn't matter. U to the power minus M. M beta L. Or not. W DW. And if you put this differentiation in this, you just get MEL by side. And this entire I just add up MEL into this entire thing. There's nothing but JDM. So what you get is one by Z MEL into Z, which is nothing but the MEL. I hope. Now it's fine. The average energy is turned out to be M into the average learning error. So there's analogy in the thing in energy and learning error. And in thermodynamics, what we do key minimum energy principle. If you have if you get a shared energy, we use if we minimize energy, like to uh, get the most stable configuration, we have to minimize the energy, right? In any case, in physics, right? In the same way, in case of learning errors, here the analogy of energy is the mean error. So to get the most, the most probable network. And best network basically to get the desired value, we have to minimize the learning error. Then, 
Yeah, right. The lower the potency resistance, the more stable is the system. And in case of thermodynamics, particularly, we use a principle, energy minimization principle, to calculate different things. Then at the entire total energy of the system should be minimized by the most stable configuration. In the same case for a neural network or any machine learning, like any processing configuration, the total learning error should be minimized to get the most stable configuration. I guess uh, like now the analogy is clear, right? Between physics and this. So you can see the error, the main error as the average internal energy of the system in case of machine learning. Is it clear now? And now up to an in the end of the equation. Uh, sorry, uh, in the end of the equation, as it's written, beta m e l. Is there anything further? Yeah. In the, no, in the, yeah, the last part of the slide, as the equation yes, is no. written. Okay, okay. Actually, it was cutting down from there, so I was wondering whether it will be something else. Or... Yeah, correct. There's nothing there apart from e l. So basically, now you know the energy, you know the formula of the entropy. In the startup term, you will get a bit of complicated term. But after a bit of algebraic manipulation and stuff, you will get this nice formula for entropy. And this thing is defined as the kulvac labeler division. It's a term in information theory. And it's usually considered as the information gain between posterior and prior probability. Like how much information you have gained. Basically what entropy measures is how much, like what is your ignorance, how much information you don't know. So this callback, since it's the negative of callback labor distance, so the KL distance measures how much information you have gained. And the increase in entropy tells about how much information you have lost. And decrease in entropy informs you about how much information you have gained. And as expected, if you use the increase the training size, the distance between posterior and prior probability increases monitoring. And you gain more, more information. The more your training set is, the more information you have about the data and the model. Is this slide clear to everyone? And this Kolbach level distance is a very widely used thing in machine learning. Basically, if you have used some machine learning algorithms, use cross entropy loss or something, binary cross entropy like those, no. That essentially means minimizing KL divergence. So our goal in supervised learning is to learn a model that minimizes the risk of the model, basically error of it. And we it is parameter parameter is by some loss function as you have seen EL in particular case. And we optimize those function over a probability distribution of model like rho not W or rho M W. And in this we have shown that like from like statistical physics approach, I've shown that this Optimizing the cost function is equivalent to minimizing the average divergence or maximizing the entropy, basically. This divergence is basically KL divergence, distance, pullback labor distance. And 
in in this case approximate distribution is posterior distribution rho n not and true is rho not w and as you measure distance between these two rho m and rho not i minimize them that means we maximize the entropy and we gain more information so that we get a better model and scale divergence is exactly the problem of maximum likelihood estimation which is the like primary basis of many supervised learning so this is all i have prepared i had plans for much going by and inference and maximum likelihood learning but didn't get much time to prepare you guys can ask doubts in all this case this text and that or speak up of all the slides if you have anything i can go through all of them this is the mean error we have defined and it turned out to be same as the average integer error this is the prior probability this is the masking function which we get the gift distribution form partition function just so we got it clear very cap and simple one cortex i'll do it just give me 2 minutes Okay, I'll do a small recap. So basically, x y is the desired x is the input and y is the desired output. But we have a faulty model or whatever we don't know. W we have a faulty network. We give the input, it gives the output f of x. And there's an error between the real actual output and the. You can. tell the analogy that experimental data and real data basically if w is experimental data y is theoretical data like that the so y is real data if w is network output so there is a small error between them so what we do is more or less we get the errors we learn from the error and try to minimize them and give the feedback to network so that it improves again right and one of the more improvisation algorithm is gradient descent we can learn more about that like how it optimization changes the model coefficients and this is basically parameter of w is determined by the what is your training set is and what is your error is And so uh, we can define error in many ways. One of the ways by taking square of the distance. So, and that is called least square error. We can construct error in many ways you want. So main goal of optimization is to minimizing the error we have in the training set. 
So next we move to the configuration phase where there's all possibility of network tableau. The so shared tableau is a mathematical function, the fun space of all possible functions. And choosing a W out of this space is denoted by rho naught tableau, the probability. So to reduce error, error and like introducing a tolerance to error, we use a masking, masking function in the configuration space so that it masks the, it tries to mask the network, which is causing too much error. So that we have more, more probability of choosing better networks and less probability of choosing bad networks. So, and these masking factors are like attenuated by a factor exponentially controlled by the error. So once we mask the interspace, our probability changes by some factor which is denoted by this e to the power minus beta e, which is nothing but like e to the power minus beta m beta e l. And we define something called partition function. Now this is where we are stuck. Now we came to physics to find figure out a way to get out things. So we use that theory of theoretical physics and thermodynamics to dive into information and entropy. So this is just a microcanonical ensemble we use to it's a basic idea about ensemble and what is entropy and what is microstates. Apart from now, we came to the real distribution, canonical ensemble. Here we deal with partition function, which we have defined initially in the masking function. So to get to get what exactly is the partition function. We propose a model to study canonical ensemble, which is heat bath model. And using that concept, we uh, this you can basically summarize using all you use all this model to get this PK term. The case probability of choosing a particular microstate, and we turned out that we have derived this as e to the power minus beta k by z, which which can which means Z we defined as this thing. Derived the value of Z we derived as this. And to get the average energy, average energy is just the expectation of energy. And just like in any probability, you calculate the expectation. We sum over energy into probability to get the expectation. And in this case, we write the energy, modify the, the average energy term into derivative of some LNG by d beta. Like, if you see, we can like manipulate, like modify the term as d by d beta. We could introduce a derivative term to make it simpler for us. So that the final term becomes this. And from there we calculate entropy also. Right. So we have now the formula for entropy and energy of Gibbs distribution, which is canonical ensemble. And we use the same concept in our configuration space of neural networks and machine learning. Where you calculate the energy and entropy. And it turns out that energy is basically nothing but the averages. And we proved that our theory of minimizing average error, it's same as that of minimizing energy in thermodynamics and physics. So basically, we have proved a belief, one of the major theory in machine learning. That minimizing the error gives the most probable network. And as I said, the entropy is 
essentially equal to the amount of information gained, the loss in entropy. And as the training set increases, the entropy increases, uh, like decreases, as you gain more and more information about the model. And you have seen that parameterizing a loss function or like maximum likelihood learning is essentially same as minimizing the scale distance. So this is a small recap. Is it clear, everyone? You can ask out for now. Hello. Anyone has any doubts? Or even after the session, you can ask in group, no problem. Also, I'll send few resources. Okay, how information and entropy is related. So yeah, basically, uh, do you know what exactly is the definition of entropy? Like, what do you call as entropy? Is the measure of disorderness in case of physics and system we call it like. So, in case of information transmitting bits of whatever coding theory. So the entropy is a measure of how much you know. The more the entropy is, the more you don't know about what exactly the system is. Well, how much you, the ignorance of your, and how do you get the ignorance? You may get that by the probability distribution. Like you model it, it might be probable. Like the more deterministic you are the more the less entropy you have and the more random or probabilistic you have you are the more entropy you have since we don't know what exactly that thing is so we model that by a probability distribution and for that probability distribution we calculate the system calculate entropy I'll send few resources in group like how to how to get information theory and thermodynamics. One of the book is okay. I'll send by end of the day. What all I have used for this? Is it clear by now? Should we wrap up the meet? Are any doubts? No, no. It's the other way. I mean, theoretical physics is used in ML. I mean, both way also. I mean, ML is used more in experimental physics, in data processing. No, no. I have used physics to study the models from ML. Like I have used theory of statistical physics. I think you got confused. So see, in case of computational and experimental physics, what you do is you use like data science and ML to for data processing and accurate data measurement, right? In theoretical physics, it's basically theoretical physics, basically mathematics. Right? So you use the concept of theoretical physics to improve the machine learning algorithm, like Boltzmann machines and stuff. You can read more about that. Any suggestion for a beginner who is planning this? 
I guess you can start with any book of information theory. Salam entropy and all would be nice. I'll suggest some book for learning for this. By the end of the day, I'll text in group. But I'll like in this spirit, how can you go forward so you know? Yes, that I think you can go and question. Professional astronomy is mostly there, depends nowadays. Can information be destroyed? I ask quantum. I mean, it can be according to quantum mechanics. But Hawking paradox says otherwise. So it's a big critical question. I can't answer. <laughs> Any more doubt? This region you can end the mint now. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it in the next session. It's how data science and machine learning can be used in astronomy. It's the other way. This session was how physics can be used in machine learning. But the next session is how machine learning can be used in 